contest around the wide world of tropics. Travel Weather Bulletin for June 17th. Invest 94L remarkably has formed today off the southeast coast of the United States. It's day 169 of the year so far, and 29 storms have formed in 2020 so far this year. Looking at the Atlantic in a closer detail, Invest 94L sits just off the southeast United States, winds are around 35 miles per hour right now. It could become a brief subtropical storm before it moves inland into the Carolinas in around 24 to 48 hours from now. There's also two areas of interest that could develop this week, with one of them being the one near the Winter Islands that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring as well. In the Eastern Pacific, there are two areas of interest near the International Dateline, we've only marked one of them here, as well as a 30% area of interest just south of Mexico that could develop as that system pushes towards the west. In the Western Pacific, surprise, surprisingly, nothing is active right now, um, ever since Nuri moved inland in China and went by there as a tropical depression. It's the same in the Indian Ocean, it's been quite quiet there since Umpun and Nisarga struck India, few weeks ago, as both as significant cyclones, and in the Southern Hemisphere, surprise, the story is also the same. No storms were active here, although Matteo France was monitoring an area of interest a few days ago, just north of Madagascar. Looking at the Atlantic, you can see Invest 94L sitting just off the southeast coast of the United States. It's got a large look to it, with a band extending towards the Getting the to the south from Cuba up towards Bermuda, which is that second area of interest could also form up with, as well as some thunderstorms impacting South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, with the outer bands reaching as far inland as Indiana. A lot of dry air speeding off the coast of Africa right now as well. This is what the Gulf of Mexico looks like. A lot of thunderstorm activity blowing up across the Yucatan Peninsula and the Western Caribbean Sea. The Gulf of Mexico is surprisingly remaining quite dry, which is helping good weather conditions along the Gulf Coast and I'm sure along the Texas and Mexico coastlines as well. Looking in the Eastern Pacific, there's a lot of treacherous activity um, to the south of Hawaii, it looks like right now. And with that literal line of clouds extending south of Hawaii all the way up to Baja California Peninsula. And so some areas of interest could develop into tropical cyclones over the next few days as they push towards the west. The western Pacific has a remarkable feature extending from the coast of China out towards the sea, extending over Japan a little bit. A lot of gusty winds are probably being reported over southern Japan as that front moves through. Also across the western Pacific, it's rather quiet as dry air is dominating most of the basin. However, we could be seeing some signs of life for the Western Pacific at long last in a few weeks or so. No, no models predict tropical cyclone formation here over a few days. The South Pacific has a lot of thunderstorm activity ongoing across the Solomon Islands towards north of Vanuatu. Fiji remaining quite dry on the, on the, on the dry side right now, I should say as no tropical cyclones or any tropical entity is forecast to for form over the next few days as we are really in the off season down here. The same cannot be said for the Indian Ocean, however. Um, there is no tropical cyclone here, however, but there is a lot of treacherous activity uh, near the India-Bangladesh region pushing into Myanmar a little bit. So we could be seeing some flash flooding there as well as some flash flooding and heavy rainfall, of course. Sea surface temperatures right now in the eastern Pacific are looking quite fair with a La Nina developing, so that would probably lead towards a quite, a, quite the season over there, maybe perhaps along the lines of last year. And the, the same cannot be said for the Atlantic, it's warming up quite nicely, as well as the Indian Ocean and the western Pacific, especially in the South China Sea just west of the Philippines. Waters are looking quite warm over there. On this day in 2012, Carlotta was dissipating over Mexico as a tropical depression. Uh, the ex tropical cyclone of what would become Chris had just developed, and Tallinn was a tropical storm, as well as Typhoon Gucho peaked on this day with winds of 145 miles per hour, almost a super typhoon, and would go on to move towards the northwest, 
and almost might have actually struck Japan as a typhoon or a tropical storm. So these are the names on the naming list in the Atlantic. The next name will be Dolly, followed by Eduard. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking up for Boris, followed by Christina. In the Central Pacific, the next name on that list will be Hone, followed by Iona. In the Western Pacific and the North Indian Ocean, Sinlaku is the next name in the Western Pacific, followed by Hagapit. Probably won't live up to his 2014 life, but we'll see. Uh, in the North Indian Ocean, Gati and Navar are the next two names over there. Be looking out for those as the season continues to get more active over there. In the Australian region, whatever it forms, the next name will be Imogen, followed by Joshua. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, if we don't get Kundai in a few weeks, then the naming list will reset and we will have a new A name. And in the South Pacific, it's Yolanda, followed by Zazu. As the next name's over there. We'll have a new Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. You can follow Forest 13's outlets. You can check out our new Cyclone Tracker on our website, forest-13.com forward slash Cyclone Tracker. You can also follow us on youtube.com forward slash Forest 13. Subscribe if you haven't. You can follow us on Facebook for more updates on there, as well as Twitter. We also do publish updates on there as well. You can become an ultimate fan of our YouTube channel to see the full list of YouTube benefits. Visit youtube.com forward slash form13 forward slash join. With a special thanks to our ultimate fans and our patrons this month as they continue to bring funds towards our way. You can also check out our growing merch store at store.force13.com as well. It continues to grow to this day. You can also check out our Discord server using the link in the description below.